everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org, that's me, the Little Shaman. Today I want to talk to you about unfairness in narcissistic relationships. This sounds like a no-brainer, but many people don't realize just how unfair the relationship has been or just how deeply it has affected them until much later, so I thought we could talk about that on the show today. Most dealings with pathologically narcissistic people are unfair. If you have dealt with a narcissistic person, you know that. However, the common sort of connotation of the word unfair doesn't really communicate how unfair the situation can really be. It's kind of like calling a completely shattered tibia a broken bone. It's true, sure, but it doesn't really convey the severity or the extent of the situation. When someone is dealing with a pathologically narcissistic person, the unfair and unreasonable expectations placed upon them are many. Those who are living in the narcissist reality are like satellites circling the earth or planets orbiting the sun. The narcissist is the center of this universe. They are the sun, the moon, the only thing that matters. Others are expected to accept this without question or qualm. They are expected to provide for the narcissist, step aside for the narcissist, and attend to the narcissist's every need without a second thought. Any deviation from this will likely result in punishment. This is because when you are dealing with a pathologically narcissistic person, you're playing by their rules and you're living in their reality. This type of relationship is a very unfair situation where in order to satisfy the other person, you must become a non-thinking, non-feeling robot who only exists to fulfill the needs of another person, a person who gives nothing back consistently except abuse, cruelty, and indifference. It's important to understand that without a complete overhaul of their thinking, narcissistic people are not able to see things any differently. This is not going to change. They are not able to see that they're being unfair and likely they're not going to care even if they did know because the only thing that really matters to them is their own feelings and their own needs. They're probably shocked that other people don't feel the same way. To the narcissist, not only are their own feelings the most important thing to them, they're the most important thing, period. As far as they're concerned, if you actually cared about them, you would agree with that. When other people assert their own needs, feelings, or concerns, narcissists take this as a threat. There can only be one son, right? This means that if your needs are important, theirs don't matter. That's the threat. If anyone else's needs are allowed to matter, suddenly that means theirs don't. You can explain that this isn't true to them all you want. It's not going to make a difference. They don't accept it. They don't understand it. They don't believe it, and they don't care. Anything that takes the focus off of them is a threat, and therefore anyone who creates that situation is their enemy. You simply having needs is seen as a threat and a betrayal. If you actually cared, you would only want to take care of the narcissist's needs. The fact that you have your own needs is proof that you're a selfish, evil person who does not love them. The fact that you understand the narcissist is not perfect is proof that you don't love them as well. If you did, you would believe they're perfect. And this is not to mean you would understand they have flaws, but you would play along that they're perfect. It means you would believe that they are perfect. To narcissistic people, that's what love is, and they struggle to present themselves as flawless and perfect so that they're able to feel loved and accepted. By others, yes, but most importantly, by themselves. They are the most important person here. This is a performance with one audience member. Of course, this is doomed to failure because it's impossible to be perfect. The internal backlash they receive from not being perfect is often so severe that they're forced to just deny it completely. I'm not imperfect, I have no flaws, I'm never wrong, I make no mistakes. They can't deny the reality that there's a problem or that the mistake was made though, so they blame somebody else. For example, let's say the narcissist in your life is cooking dinner. Time goes by, the family's watching TV, and everybody gets caught up and dinner gets burned. A non-narcissistic person would perhaps apologize or maybe even laugh at their own mistake here, but narcissistic people often react very differently. They see nothing funny about being imperfect. What often happens is they will become upset at the mistake and angry at themselves, which they then project onto the other people in the home, blaming them for distracting them, for not hearing the timer, or for otherwise causing the mistake. This happens because they cannot accept that they're not flawless. To them, this means they are unlovable, unacceptable, unbearable, however you want to put that. As if this were not unfair enough, 
they also hold other people to these same impossible standards as well. So when it is you who is burned dinner, you might find yourself in the middle of a very nasty scene simply for making a basic mistake. Perfect people cannot be loved. This is how pathologically narcissistic people see it. If you are not perfect, you are not good enough. It's a perfect setup, really, because it's doomed to failure. How can you be seen as perfect when your function is to take the blame for everything about themselves that they can't accept? The deck is stacked against you from the get-go, and that never changes. In a relationship of any kind with a pathologically narcissistic person, you will be punished, shamed, and abused for normal behavior. You will not be permitted to just be a human being. Ironically, you'll also be told that that's what you're doing to the narcissist. But in reality, it's what they're doing to themselves. The reason they treat you this way is because you're seen as a tool and not a person. Your needs are not considered. Your feelings are not important. You are experienced as a piece of property that they use when they need it, and that's basically it. Narcissists keep people around because they need them. Not because they like them, not because they feel for them, and not because they want them. They need them. Without other people, narcissists have no self-worth and very often they will decompensate. They need a continuous flow of energy and attention from other people or basically they can't exist. Being treated so unfairly often creates many problems for people, especially if it happens over a long period of time. It can cause problems with self-esteem, self-worth, an inability to assert themselves, problems with guilt and shame, an inability to understand or recognize one's own needs, codependency, PTSD, and even narcissistic types of defense mechanisms. Because remember, that's what narcissism is. It's a defense mechanism. Perhaps the biggest thing that being treated unfairly results in is anger. This level of repeated unreasonableness, unfairness, and the blatant dehumanization that results from it usually causes enormous anger in people. It may or may not be readily seen or recognized by the victim, but it's almost always there. Anger is often the legacy of narcissistic abuse. If you are in this situation, please ask yourself what you are waiting for. What would it take to convince you that this person believes themselves to be the only thing that matters? And if you have accepted that, ask yourself why you are continuing to allow yourself to be treated this way. Think about how long you've been waiting to matter and ask yourself if the ends have justified the means. Think back to a few months or a few years ago when you thought the same things you're thinking now and see if anything has changed. It doesn't matter what they say or how they spin it. You are not responsible for the narcissist. Not their feelings, not their happiness. You are only responsible for your own. Hope this clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. I have started taking appointments online and over the phone. If you wanted to go ahead and schedule an appointment with me, visit littleshaman.org and click the Bookings tab. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org. That's me, the Little Shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you and have a wonderful day.